Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name is Jimmy, uh, and welcome to my channel, Envisage. On today's lesson, we will discuss the underlying pathogenesis of heart failure, followed by the clinical manifestation, and finally, the treatment algorithm for both the chronic heart failure as well as acute decompensated heart failure. So for simplicity, the heart's main function is to deliver oxygen and blood nutrients to the rest of the body. So an adequate distribution of blood to the rest of the body is known as heart failure. There are two types of heart failure, which are the preserved ejection fraction as well as reduced ejection fraction. The distribution of the blood flow process can be broken down into two separate processes. The filling, which is known as diastole, as well as the contraction of the heart, which is known as systole. Uh, ultimately, the failure of diastole or systole can lead to a decrease in cardiac output through decreased stroke volume. Stroke volume is the blood pumped out of the left ventricle of the heart during each systolic contraction. This graphical representation can be viewed as the Frank Starling Law. The Frank Starling Law states that the increased filling pressure of the heart leads to an increase in cardiac output. Utilizing the circulatory flow diagram, we can envision the blood flow into the different chambers of the heart. From the diagram, we can see the deoxygenated blood gets pumped into the pulmonary circulation via the right ventricles, and the oxygenated blood gets pumped into the systemic circulation by the left ventricles. In the case, if there are increased resistance, the blood will always flow backward. As a result, many patients who have left side heart failure, we can see that the blood flow backs into the pulmonary circulation, and as a result, many of these patients often suffer pulmonary congestion. Clinical presentation of pulmonary congestion includes dyspnea and orthopnea. Dyspnea means shortness of breath, and orthopnea is the relief of shortness of breath when sitting up or standing. So for patients who have right side heart failure, the blood moves back into the systemic circulation. The buildup of fluid not only causes weight gain, but also third spacing. This can often be seen in patients when practitioner presses against the patient's body and leaves a pit, where it takes the skin's integrity longer to return it to normal form. The peritoneum is also a cavity that can hold a lot of fluid. So patients who third space will also present a distension of the abdomen. Finally, patients may also experience liver and splenomegaly, which is the enlargement of the liver and the spleen. Along with these clinical presentations are non-specific clinical representations that also may occur in both right or left side of heart failure, which includes weight gain, hypertension, as well as arrhythmia. The stretching of the cardiac tissues through concentric hypertrophy may lead to insynchronicity, which may contribute to arrhythmia. So to better understand the underlying pathogenesis of the heart failure, I've broken down into different, two different components, the right-sided and the left-sided heart failure. But regardless of whether it is the right or the left-sided heart failure, the end result will ultimately affect cardiac output due to either systole or diastole, which is the core concept of understanding the heart. Left heart side failure includes diabetes, ischemic heart disease, heart attack, hypertension, dilated cardiomyopathy, otherwise known as concentric hypertrophy, aortic stenosis, and restricted cardiomyopathy. But wait, if you'd like to learn a bit more about diabetes, please click on this link right here. So atherosclerotic plaque, which blocks coronary artery, may cause myocardium damage that prevents the contraction of the heart during systole. The inability of the heart to contract forcefully leads to a decreased stroke volume and thus cardiac output. So in hypertension, the arterial pressure in the systemic circulation makes the left side of the heart hard to pump against its concentration gradient. So in order to compensate, the body will increase the size of the heart to combat against the pressure gradient. Although this seems favorable in the short term, the longer term may lead to acute decompensating heart failure. So 
So the enlarged heart not only requires more oxygen, but the oversized heart may compress against coronary artery and as a result may further diminish oxygen supply and damage to the myocardium. In dilated myocarpathy or concentric myopathy, the overall size of the heart does not change, but there is a thickening of the organ cell wall. As a result, the decreased overall volume of the filling of the heart decreases cardiac output. Aortic stenosis is the blockage of the aortic valve, which will lead to a decrease in cardiac output because of the decreased diastolic volume, which translates to the decreased volume of blood being pumped out from the left ventricle. Restricted cardiomyopathy is the inability for the myocardium to contract due to the stiffness and the rigidity of the myocardium wall. The pathogenesis of the right side heart failure is usually due to the left side heart failure, atrial septal defect, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The fluid backup pressure into the pulmonary ring due to the left side heart failure makes it increasingly more difficult for the right side of the ventricle to pump against the pressure resistance, which will lead to a downstream cascade of right heart hypertrophy. Atrial septal defect is when there is a hole between the two atriums, and as a result of the hole, the fluid from the left side of the atrium, due to the pressure being larger, will travel into the right side, causing the enlargement, thus eventually enlargement of the right-sided heart. Finally, the inability of gas exchange and thus pulmonary vasoconstriction in COPD patients makes it more difficult for the right side of the heart to pump against. And by the same compensatory mechanism, the right side of the heart will increase the size to combat the increase in resistance. Finally, we will provide the acronym component as well as a graphical representation to visualize the treatment algorithm for both chronic as well as acute decompensated heart failure. So the acronym spells out VIVO cables. So VIVO or VIVARE in Latin means to live and can be utilized in acute decompensated heart failure patients because the person who is dying would want to live. So V for venous dilators, which consists of nitroglycerin, I for inotropes, which includes dobutamine and melanorone. The second V stands for vasopressors, which includes dopamine. And finally, the O stands for loop diuretics. Cables for chronic heart failure because C stands for chronic as well as unique cables in the picture uh, in our cartoon picture off to the left to sustain life. Uh, C stands for colonor, A stands for aldosterone antagonist, which includes all of the different agents within the RAS pathway, B for beta blockers, L for loop diuretics, E for entresto, and finally S stands for the sodium glucose transporter. We will now utilize the four squares to not only provide a visual representation of the heart chambers, but as well as a treatment approach. So for acute decompensated component treatment algorithm, they're broken down into different four different pathways. So depending on the patient's perfusion status, as well as symptoms of congestion, different combinations will be given. For warm and wet, loop diuretics can be given. For cold and wet, both loop diuretics and inotrope, as well as vasopressor, are given to relieve the congestion in the heart, as well as to establish perfusion through constriction or contractility of the heart. And finally, for cold and dry, vasodilators, ionotropes, and vasopressors uh, can be given to not only decrease vascular resistance, but reperfusion, vasoconstriction, and the contractility of the heart. For chronic heart failure, the ultimate goal is to increase cardiac output by preventing the enlargement of the heart through blocking body's natural compensatory mechanism to increase cardiac output or increase the body's own natural compensatory mechanism that allows naturesis and vasodilation. So we know that when the heart starts to show signs of cardiac changes and remodeling, there may be an increasing difficulty in terms of the disease management. These three factors of body's own compensatory mechanism that may lead to myocardial hypertrophy includes the activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which increases the overall vascular resistance. The RAS system, which ultimately leads to the reabsorption of aldosterone, 
that leads to blood pressure increases. And finally, vasopressin or the reabsorption of ADH, which similarly by similar effect leads to an increase in pressure and vascular resistance. Uh, we also know that the natriuretic peptide, which is released in response by the wall stretch of the myocardium wall, may help increase diuresis and vasodilation. And this helps decrease blood pressure. So under these four compensatory mechanisms are drugs that increases cardiac output, as well as prevent the activation of the body's own compensatory mechanism, which may lead to myocardial hypertrophy, as well as enhancing the body's own way of causing naturesis. So beta blocker may be used for sympathetic nervous system activation, and of the ACE, R, as well as aldosterone receptor antagonists, this can be used to inactivate the RAS system. Loop diuretics, as well as SGLT2, help decrease fluid overload. And finally, RNA inhibits the breakdown of natriuretic peptide produced in the body, which help further achieve vasodilation and naturesis, ultimately decreasing blood pressure or vascular resistance for the heart to pump against. Uh, but please know along with those treatment options are another two special consideration for the special population. Bidel is used as a secondary treatment in African American and digoxin is only used as a symptomatic relief in heart failure. And this contains all the med different medications in heart failure. Thank you for watching. Please comment below and let me know what other videos you'd like to see next. As always, let's continue to empower a different way to vision success. I'll see you guys in the next one.